Shiny hunting is one of the most important things to know about when playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I myself have bumped into a lot of shiny Pokemon during my adventures, and I'm here to share with you eight shiny methods in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The basic shiny rate. Pokemon games telling you what the exact shiny rate in the game should be is a very cool thing, and this game does it as well. When you're in your biology class, which you should be going to and taking, Jacques will tell you about the 1 in 4,000 chance for a Pokemon to be a shiny. That means any Pokemon that renders in on your map for you has a 1 in 4,000 chance for it to be a shiny. And there are a lot of Pokemon spawning in this game. Before you go shiny hunting, you're probably going to need a very good Pokemon that has a very good move known as False Swipe. When you catch 30 species of Pokemon and visit Jock, he is going to give you the TM False Swipe, and you can apply this to a Pokemon that you want to use it on. False Swipe is going to allow you to hit a Pokemon and not KO it, and bring them all the way down to 1 HP. Some Pokemon I suggest that you add this on are Gallade, Breloom, or Zongoose. If you happen to complete your whole entire Pokédex and get all the Pokemon in the game, you visit Jock, and Jock will give you the Shiny Charm. This will make it even better than 1 out of 4,000 chance. I'll make sure to pin the exact data in the first comment down below. So make sure you try to catch as many Pokemon as you can if your goal in the game is to start shiny hunting. Let's talk about shiny sounds. Now, I don't know if this is a pro or a con for some people, but Pokemon do not make shiny sounds when you see them in the overworld. A lot of people got used to how Pokemon Legends Arceus was and the shinies were really in your face when they sparkled. In this game, you have to be able to identify a shiny Pokemon from the moment you see it. And the only way for you to tell if it's shiny is once you enter into battle with it or auto battle, but we'll get on to that. A big pro tip before you go out and shiny hunt is make sure to turn off auto save. Make sure you bring on the manual save that you have to hard save it and the game doesn't just auto save because when you bump into a shiny and that shiny is in front of you, just like Pokemon Legends Arceus, you can save in front of that shiny and when you reboot your game, it is going to appear in that exact same spot. Remember, if that Pokemon moves out of your render distance or if you get too far away from it, it will despawn completely. And if you did not save beforehand, there is no way to recover that Pokemon if it wasn't in your save screen in front of you. I was able to get a shiny Banet to show up in my game. I was really shocked by it. So I took my camera out to take some photos of it to try to maybe make a thumbnail on Banet. And then on the left of me, there were a bunch of Drift Bloom outbreaks happening. And I totally missed that there was a shiny one. I then looked towards my left and saw a shiny Drift Bloom. I thought nothing of it. And I remembered later on that I saved before the Banet. So as I was taking my pictures and looking around, I totally forgot to save again. And before I knew it, the Drift Bloom moved out of my viewer distance and it completely disappeared. And no matter how many times I restarted my game from that Banette, it never showed back up again. And I lost two for one shiny Pokemon that were ghosts and that really sucked. So I'm telling you this so you are always aware, save as soon as you see shiny Pokemon. The good part is at least I have it documented for this shiny hunting video. Speaking of catching Pokemon, I need you to hit that subscribe button so Maridon can go ahead and catch all these dragon Pokemon. Please subscribe. Let's talk about the first way to shiny hunt. I call this the travel method. All you simply have to do is just run across the map, journey as much as you want, enjoy the game, and as you're traveling, like I mentioned before, Every Pokemon is a 1 out of 4,000 chance to be a shiny. And with that many Pokemon spawning and despawning, you're bound to bump into a shiny. This is in fact the way most players are going to actually have a shiny Pokemon show up. And this will be the big ones that everyone are tweeting about. And if that happens, make sure to tweet at me and tell me your shiny Pokemon you get from just adventuring in the game. Something you are doing when you're exploring, you can render and unrender by walking away from the Pokemon and walking back and you might get different spawns in that area. Another thing you can do is go ahead and auto battle them or completely battle those Pokemon. When you nuke those Pokemon off the map, new ones will spawn in and take its place. It could be a different species. It could be the same species. So these are just ways during your adventure that you can come across them. So this is the travel method. Moving on, we have Mass Outbreak Shiny Hunting. Mass Outbreaks are back from Pokemon Legends Arceus, but they are a lot better in this game because there are over 50 to 100 of these Pokemon spawning all at once during these Mass Outbreaks. It almost feels impossible to clear these, but as you are clearing out these Mass Outbreaks, you'll start to get notifications that they're dwindling down, there's only a few left, and then it just disappears off your map. To identify a Mass Outbreak, you open up your map and you'll see a question mark glowing icon if you first start your game. That question mark is just referring to you not registering that Pokemon in your decks, and that red icon behind it is telling you 
this is a mass outbreak. There are a ton of Pokemon here right now. If it's registered in your decks, it'll simply just show up as that Pokemon. Once you are at these mass outbreaks, your best bet to defeat all of them is going to be doing auto battling. Auto battling is a very handy tool when it comes to this because it's a little more easier way to clear the mass outbreaks. This is in fact also the fastest way. The more Pokemon you clear, the more new ones spawn in. And again, that chance of the shiny showing up is very high, especially since mass outbreaks only focus on one Pokemon species. If you want to change the Pokemon that are spawning in your mass outbreaks, you can go ahead and do a date skip, save your game, close your game, move the date up, and then come back to your game. And the mass outbreak should change to different Pokemon. Let's talk about auto battling because auto battling in itself is its own method of shiny hunting. Now, auto battle was a big thing that people were really scared of when it came to this game because people thought once they sent out their Pokemon to battle, it will completely nuke a shiny Pokemon just like it nukes every other Pokemon around it. But it does not. The game has programmed it so that if you send out a Pokemon in auto battle towards a shiny Pokemon, it will refuse to attack it because it knows it's valuable and doesn't want you feeling really sad about it. So I was able to test this on a bunch of Murkrow. Murkrow has showed up for me twice in this game already. I'm actually sick of that shiny Pokemon. But besides that, that was a great Pokemon to test it out on. And you can see in the footage that my Pokemon just wanted nothing to do with knocking it out. Anyway, by using this auto battling technique within my mass outbreak, I was able to get a shiny Ghastly, which is also not the greatest shiny Pokemon that would appear on the map and not everyone would know if it was by itself, if it was shiny or not. So shout out to auto battling for helping me with that. By the way, if you see high level Pokemon like Chansey or Blissey in a mass outbreak, I suggest you don't auto battle and you just attack each one individually because they give a lot of experience and you get more experience from actually battling the Pokemon. Raid Dens are also another way of shiny hunting. This is a clip of a Pokemon showing up shiny in a Raid Den. This footage was sent over to me via Discord. So here's what we have with the shiny Raid Den. Hopefully you guys can find this when you're going out on your adventure. And you should also make sure that you have auto save off before you encounter a shiny Raid Den. That way you can save beforehand. And during raids, you have the option to actually leave the raid and nothing will happen. The raid will still be there. So if you do happen to discover a shiny Pokemon in a raid, you can save outside of the raid, invite three other friends to come help you take it down, and all four of you can benefit from that shiny Pokemon. The next method I wanted to talk to you about is the breeding method. In this game, there are no daycare centers, and the only way for you to breed Pokemon is by starting a picnic. Now, the most important things to consider is that you have two compatible Pokemon or have a ditto with whatever the other Pokemon is to get your babies. Now, something I do is I usually eat a sandwich that has egg power. That'll boost the amount of egg encounters I have by them showing up more in the basket when you select it. Egg, egg encounters, very good. And Pokemon start to make babies once you eat a sandwich. And you can just go ahead and collect these eggs. The eggs, by the way, stack up to only 10. After that, you have to clear those 10. They'll go into your inventory and then you can go ahead and hatch them. And in order to check how long that egg boost is, you just have to click on the D-pad right here and it'll show you how long you have left for that boost for egg power. And you could just sit there, camp and get boxes full of eggs. And the really cool part about this game is you don't need a Pokemon with flame body to hatch the eggs faster. You can just get out of the picnic once you're done run around and the eggs will start hatching in the overworld. You can probably pump out eggs way faster in this game than you did in any previous Pokemon game. So egg hatching is gonna be really good. A good suggestion of Pokemon that you should have is a foreign ditto. This is going to have the Masuda method with it because you are increasing your chances for a shiny even higher by having a ditto from another region in your party. While we're talking about the picnic, let's talk about something known as encounter power. If you make a sandwich that has encounter power, you could spawn in a lot of Pokemon of that specific type. Not only do you have to have it in the picnics, but you can go to stores and buy that specific food that boosts encounter rate. Encounter rate is going to cause that specific type of Pokemon to spawn more often around you. So if you know an area where a lot of dragon Pokemon spawn, or you see dragon Pokemon normally, and you have the dragon encounter rate buff from eating food, then you'll be able to see a lot more dragons and start hunting them even better. Here's an example of what happens when I do take a boost for dragon Pokemon and I start walking around and you can see a lot of dragon Pokemon spawning everywhere I go. Now, if you're hunting a specific type of Pokemon, this is another great way of going about it if you're not doing a massive outbreak. So 
I call this the encounter power hunting method. This is early game, and there's going to also be another one that is going to be more of the end game shiny hunting when it comes to sandwiches. Now let's talk about the end game sandwiches. This is once you become champion and you have access to five star raids and you can start defeating them. Each of these raids are going to start dropping something known as Herba Mystica, which you should be familiar with from the storyline, except you're going to be getting sweet, salty, spicy, sour, and bitter. Now, using these drops that come from higher Terra raid dens, you're going to be able to create a secret sandwich that is going to boost your shiny odds in your favor and basically having it be much more easier to encounter Pokemon in your game that are shiny. So if you do want to see what these sandwich recipes are that help you in the end game, here is the complete cheat guide in order to boost shiny odds like insane amounts when you reach the end game. Each ingredient is going to be responsible for that specific Pokemon type to show up. And you can see a common theme throughout all of these is that it needs at least one salty Herba Mystica. So you can go ahead and take a screenshot of this. That's the dragon, dark ice bug, water rock, normal flying, grass, poison, ghost, fire, psychic, and fighting, and steel, fairy, and electric. So these are all the ones that you need in the game in order to get you what you want. Now, the one that I tested out was the dragon sandwich. Now, I'm going to roll the footage, and you can see me making the sandwich just using an avocado and slapping in the salties, and you can see the boost that come with the specific sandwich. And what this boost does is it's going to increase the dragon Pokemon that show up. It's going to increase the shiny Pokemon that show up. So basically, in a way, I'm creating my own mass outbreak. That's basically the real purpose of boosting an encounter type. You make your own personal mass outbreaks. And what I wanted to hunt was a Cyclizer. And this specific spot on the map is where I got them to show up, luckily. So I was just auto-battling, like I mentioned, which is a method we talked about. And auto-battling non-stop with my Gallade, who's actually probably really good to auto-battle with too, by the way. And Gallade just kept auto-battling, auto-battling, until we finally got a different one to spawn. And you can see that Cyclizer right there looks really good. And I wanted to try to take some pictures of it, but I wasn't able to. Finally, if you run up to that Pokemon and encounter it you'll be able to see it in all its glory by the sparkling animation which is right there and i caught the cyclizer it is now mine it is shiny that is pretty much how you're going to end game shiny hunt with sandwiches now there's one final method that we're going to be talking about and that is the multiplayer shiny hunting method in multiplayer when you join someone else's world you can actually steal the pokemon that show up in their world we have an example here where a new pokemon was by the beach and i decided to just roll up on it interact with it and go ahead and just catch it now when you catch it that means the other person cannot interact with it and they can do anything about it and once it's yours it's gone off the map if you happen to run away from this pokemon that also disappears the pokemon it's kind of glitchy in multiplayer so whatever pokemon you run into make sure you are determined on catching that pokemon because if you decide to run away from it to help benefit your friend by saying oh you know what i'm going to give you the shiny let me run away it's probably going to disappear off the map. Other cool ways to shiny hunt in multiplayer also include all the other ways we talked about, but I went in a little more detail in my multiplayer guide. If you want to go ahead and see more information on the game, go ahead and click on this video over here.